does this when you're screen casting. Um, trigger capture area. Once that's there, go to apply, and you need to set the name to something that isn't generic like control point again. Just put it to something you'll know it by by CP under slash one for control point one, and call it trigger area or capture area. It really doesn't matter as long as you know it's the trigger and capture area. So go to apply and I'm just going to minimize hammer for a second because there we go. Um, you don't want it to start disabled, you don't want it to have a parent, you want it to relate to a control point. This key value you will need to relate it to the flag. You don't relate it to the base, you relate it to the flag. So control point you're going to um, relate it to the control point you want to capture. So when you step inside this, this key value tells tells what tells the flag tells a specific flag what flag it's capturing. So when you step inside this trigger texture, which is around CP1, you want it to capture CP1. So you want it to capture the CP1 flag. So click CP1 flag, and that and that's okay. Um, can red capture this point? I usually select yes. You can again. This is down to the map of what type of map they're making. So it's really up to you, but this key value basically means can the red capture the point? I always select yes. Can blue capture the point? I, I always select yes. Um, so it's as I said before, it's always down to you. Likewise with the number of red players to cap and the number of blue players to cap the point, I always I always um, select one because if it goes to sub, uh, sudden death, I always like to have. And if there's one player left, you don't want them to not be able to capture the point, as they can't win. So. Obviously, select one so even if there's one player left, they can still win the map or win the round, so that's quite nice. Again, with red and blue, I always leave them the same because you don't want to give one team disadvantage. Um, On to the next key values red spawn adjust. This basically overrides the spawn time that the spawn, the respawn time that you would normally experience. So, for example, if the map for some reason is giving you 12 second respawn time you can override the red and blue re uh, respawn time um, if this control point is being captured so if this control point is being captured you can adjust the spawn time it takes so I like to because it's the last control point before the red base I like to give each team a bit of an advantage um, not over each other just an advantage to try and get all the way from there if a blue is trying to capture this basically They've made it all the way from their base, captured how many control, uh, so many control points, and they're at this last control point. So if a a blue team member dies, they don't want to wait 12 seconds, 12, 15 seconds to respawn to try and capture the point. So override their control point, uh, their respawn time for this control point for something like six or seven seconds. I usually select seven seconds, as if it's too low, it'll it'll make the game unbalanced and a bit too hectic and too hard to capture but if it's not too high or not too low it's fine, I usually select 7 seconds um, do it the same for both teams as you don't want to make it unbalanced um, time to capture again I'm going to leave this at the default value 5 um, you can always change it depending on what type of map you're making it's always down to you You don't. I'm not going to tell you what to set it as as I can't tell you because I'm not making your map. Um, it really depends on the map you're making and the circumstances surrounding your map. If it's hard to capture, um, if the control point is hard to capture, put it to a lower value, like five or seven seconds. But if it's an easy control point to capture, put it higher to about ten or twelve seconds. That's a rough guide. You can always mess about the control point time, the time to capture control point. It's really up to you. Once you've done that, go to apply. Now we need to select outputs for this control point. Um, go to add. Sorry, delete one. Go to add, and these will all be bunched up at first, but that's fine as they will be okay in a minute. You need to change my output names to on cap team on cap team one. The one at the end basically means either the red or blue team. I don't know which one it means, but since we're going to do a new output afterwards for on cap team two, it doesn't really matter. Um, so on cap team one, on target entities named, you need to select the base for that control point. Via this input, you need to select skin. So you can either type in skin, or you can select skin from the list. 
um, with a parameter override of um, since you're doing on cap team one, if the end number is one, put one in there. This basically changes the skin. Hammer's gone funny again. This basically changes changes the skin of the node in the middle of the control point. So um, if you've got if a blue team is capturing this or if a red team is capturing this, when it does get captured, it will just change the node color. So at the moment it's white. Um, in game, it will just change color. So that's all it does. Um, you want it to fire once only, and then go to apply. Then go to a new, uh, add a new output, and just go to on cap team two. Select the base again. Vice input type in skin. With because it's two, put two in the box, and then to fire once only, and go to apply, and then go to cancel. Now you have one working control point. Um, because it's taken ages to build one control point, I'm not going to build a second and a third one from scratch, so I'm just going to copy. You can create uh, a different, uh, more than one control point from scratch, but I'm going to copy and paste it. So what I'm going to do now is copy the base, the flag, and the trigger, and then paste those into my map again, uh, twice more. So paste them for one in the middle, which will be the neutral zone. and one at the end for the blue base. Sorry this is getting messy, I, I know it is, but you have to go backwards and forwards all, all of the time because control points are hard to understand. So now you've got your red control point and you've got your middle control point and you've got your blue control point, you need to go to the blue, um, the middle control point which will be your neutral zone. You need to change all, all of the names that you've given this because these, because these are copy and pasted, these will have the names of the red control point. So you need to go to the neutral zone base, double click on it and just change its name from CP1 base to CP2 base and go to apply and then cancel. Select the flag, go to its properties, change it from CP1 flag to CP2 flag, print name, put it to neutral as it's in a neutral zone change its default owner to neither because you don't want anyone to own it from the start give an index of 1 because you've named your red control point as 0 because it's in the middle and it's not a final control point before someone's base you want to give it a normal warning um, again with these red previous required point 1, 2 and 3 and the blue previous required point 1, 2 and 3 I'll get back to them later so go to apply now select the trigger you can either double click or right click and go to properties you need to change it from CP1 trigger area to CP2 trigger area. Um, the control point is going to capture. You want to select CP2 flag. And you can uh, change all of these options, like I said before, explained in control point one. Um, just, just mess about with them until they fit the type of map you're making. Um, there is no right or wrong, but there is there needs to be a balance between the capture times and the respawn times. Just mess about with them and whatever fits your map, fits your map. Now most people forget this and this is why the control points don't work. They forget to change the outputs. Because you are setting the target entity's name to CP1 base, you need to now change it to the CP2 base. So just simply change it to CP2 base and go to on cap team 2, then change it from CP1 base and go to CP2 base. So both ent both outputs for this uh, for this trigger area has to be CP2 base and make sure the parameter override matches the number at the end of the output named. Once that's done go to apply and go to cancel. Now go to your third control point which it will be the blue base. Go to the base and change it from CP1 base to CP3 base. Apply it. Go to cancel. Go to the flag double click on the flag, change it from CP1 flag to CP3 flag, change it from red base, the print name from red base to blue base, um, the default owner, put it to blue, and, go, and change it from an index of 0 to an index of 3 because your red control point had uh, 0, your neutral control point had 1, sorry this should be 2, um, so this one has 2. And because it is the final control point before the blue base, leave it a final capture point warning.